Gene Moe was an avid outdoorsman who had been hunting the Alaskan backcountry for more than 50 years. He knows better than anyone that if a bear wants your lunch, it's best to just let him have it. It was November 1st, 1999. Gene was hunting deer in the wilderness near Kodiak, Alaska. He had been out all day and it was almost dark when he finally got lucky. At about two o'clock, he saw another buck and decided to take it while there was still enough daylight to get back to Afghanak. His hunting partner didn't show up, so he began skinning it out alone. All the meat was off the carcass and laid out on plastic, and the heart and liver were in his hands when he heard the blood-curdling roar. Gene snapped his head around at the ferociously loud and deep, falling roar of a close and angry bear. At first glimpse, he knew he was in for the fight of his life. This was no trotting charge of a bluffing bear. Both front paws reached forward together and each leap of a galloping bear going in for the kill. Gene made one instinctive step towards his rifle just five feet away and then recognized that the futility of dropping an inferior weapon to grab a superior one, he'd never have time to shoot. The knife he had been using to skin a sick to black-tailed deer was still in his hands, so he thrust it forward to meet the raging bear's wide-open mouth, hoping to shove it down her throat. He missed the throat, and as the knife slid along her head and the bear bit down on Jean's right arm just above the elbow, taking out a big chunk of flesh, he could feel her trying to tear off the arm completely. He quickly reached over her head with his left hand to jab a finger in her eye. He rammed his finger in as hard and far as it would go, then twisted. This experience proved to be so new and so intolerable that she relaxed her grip on his arm and tried to pull away. But Jean's left arm was still over her neck. Thinking he might be able to put her on the ground in a more helpless position, he attempted to bulldog her as he had young bulls during his youth on the farm in Minnesota. Big mistake. She flipped her neck and threw him eight feet away. Having watched bears doing a lot of berry picking and digging, Jean knew she'd swing at him with her right paw like humans the majority of bears are right handed. This one stood up on her hind legs, arms outstretched in scarecrow fashion and began circling, picking her moment to end this confrontation. He was certain that she was standing on her hind legs to place that right paw at the best level to accomplish her swift swipe to his head, ending the whole ordeal. He tried to move close to his rifle while focusing his eye on nothing but the right paw. He saw it coming the instant it started, and at that same instant he jerked his head back. She missed, but came close enough that one claw split his ear and almost tore off the earlobe. She began circling him again. Jean knew that he had to get inside that right paw to survive. She was literally beating him to death. She came at him fast on all fours, and this time Jean was stepping off with his left foot, right foot still on the ground, as the paw started to swing. The paw missed and swung around his back, so she bit a large chunk out on his right leg, just above the knee instead. The pain was severe. But now Jean was inside the right front paw and against the bear's shoulder with his left arm over her neck. His right arm had no feeling and flesh from above the elbow hung down to his finger. He reached over the neck and stabbed four times as hard as he could, then changing tactics, he moved closer to the jaw to slice the neck so he could push his knife and fist into the cut to stab even deeper. She let go and started circling him once again. Noticing that some of the fight was going out of her, Jean yelled, Bear, the Lord's on my side, so come on. She did, and as she ran, Jean could see blood still gushing from the cut nearest the jaw. He also noticed that her head was cocked oddly sideways, suggesting that the last stab had probably gone deep enough to injure a vertebrae. Terribly battered with loose skin and flesh hanging from his arm, claws gashing in his shoulder and painfully dragging his right leg, six foot three inch Jean tried to stand tall and move towards her looking as menacing as possible. It didn't stop her from charging. All Jean had left now was a little prayer and the advice of a dog musher friend who said a blow to the nose from a light club he carried would stop hurting any animal. Jean drew back his left fist and as the bear leaped at him, he threw the hardest punch of his life. He missed the nose but struck her cocked head just under the eye. The impact of the punch combined with the momentum of the 750 pound brown bear was so powerful that his arm and hand went white and he had no feeling left in his knuckles. The sow's two front teeth that were still covered with Jean's meat, as he tells it, before suddenly dropping with her paws under her body. Her cocked head straightened with the blow and her nose pulled downward during the fall, ramming it into the moss she laid motionless.
He believed this one was dead from damage he had inflicted to the spine with his knife and fist, but he wasn't taking any chances. He stepped back to get his rifle before he could shoot, however, he had his, fir his first free hand of the knife but found that he could not relax his grip. Eventually, he was able to pull his fingers from the knife with his teeth, but then the loose skin and flesh from his arm fell over the scope of the rifle. Finally, he managed to raise the rifle high enough to get to the flesh off the side, then lower it to the shoot the bear twice in the chest. A little fur blew both times, but the bear never twitched. Clearly, Gene's lethal punch had finished at breaking the vertebrae of his 750-pound opponent. Gene's ordeal, however, was far from over. He was two miles away from the boat, feeling dizzy from loss of blood and still bleeding badly. He pulled the hanging flesh back up on his right arm and wrapped a plastic bag around it the best he could. The hunting pants he purchased in 1948 made of quarter-inch thick wool and worn only for the annual hunts had probably reduced the potential damage when the bear bit a chunk out of his right leg. He eventually made it back to safety. After a month of rehab, two skin grafts, and over 500 stitches later, Gene made a full recovery.